All right, well, let's get started. I am Arn van Alstafjord. I'm the global head of the KCS Academy. And welcome to our KCS Verified Vendor Series. So in this series, you get to hear KCS best practices, uh, both from our, our experts, uh, from our aligned and verified vendors, as well as our customers. And for those not familiar with our KCS Aligned and Verified program, it's an elite group of tools that supports the KCS practices. And so in the case of our verified vendors, they have demonstrated they support all eight KCS practices. And our line vendors are more specialized and proven that they support elements of the KCS methodology. And this webinar is sponsored by Come Around, and they are one of our KCS v6 verified vendors. And I am pleased to introduce uh, Lena Stormavinga. And Lena is head of digital services at Electrolux. She is a former certified KCS trainer and consultant and has a tremendous amount of experience with KCS. And Lena will present Electrolux's uh, key and strategy, their success factors, their learnings and their accomplishments. And they've achieved incredible benefits from their KCS implementation. And we look forward to hearing all about their experience. Uh, but some housekeeping before we begin, this session is being recorded and will be posted at the KCS Academy site, mm -hmm. as well as uh, sent out to all who registered. And please post your questions in chat. We'll be monitoring the chat. Some will be able to answer. We have uh, uh, many uh, partners of Lena, uh, and both from Electrolux and Come Around, who will be monitoring the chat. So they'll either answer them, they'll bring them up to lean as appropriate in the flow or save them for the Q&A session at the end. And while you're not speaking, please put yourself on mute. And um, also wanna make sure you're aware of upcoming KCS uh, Academy events. On Thursday, December 10th, we'll have a KCS in Action webinar featuring Akamai. And there you get to learn about Akamai's KDE, the Knowledge Domain Expert, uh, program developed where they developed a KPE driven problem management approach that solved the pitfalls of root cause codes and case classifications. Looking forward to hearing that. Uh, we all often talk about the linked article as that problem signature. So it'll be interesting to see their approach there. And then on Tuesday, January 26th, we'll have a KCS aligned webinar uh, sponsored by Search Unify. And Search Unify, they provide federated search capabilities for both customers and agents and have many successful KCS implementations, implementations in KCS shops. Um, and there you get to hear from Search Unify and their customers on their implementations and the benefits realized. And you can register for the, those events at the KCS Academy site. And uh, Jennifer is posting the link in the chat. Um, the link is available for the Akamai and we're working to get that Search Unify link up, but hopefully we'll have that uh, up during that call and you'll see that in the chat. But very excited about today's event and pleased to pass it over to Lena. Thank you, Anfim, for that introduction. I'm glad to hear that you have so many ongoing events as well. And thank you everybody for participating in this event. I feel honored that this is the one with the most uh, participants in it. So I hope I live up to everybody's expectations for that. Uh, and I'm also really excited to, to be here. This is one webinar that I have been looking forward to for quite some time to really be able to share what I have done for Electrolux since I joined the company almost three years ago. Um, so the journey throughout that, the achievements we had, the challenges, um, I'm ready to share that with uh, both the KCS obviously friends and family out there or KM friends or for anyone that are new and excited or if you guys are just here to understand more about my crazy mathematical skills as you saw in the invite as well what are these numbers all about and 10,488 percent increase is that correct or does not Lena know how to do math let's find out from the session today so starting with the uh, Electrolux, just to give you a little overview over who we are. We are an organization that turned 100 year last year. So we have been, a lot, been around for a very long time. Uh, and it started up here in Sweden, in Stockholm, uh, selling vacuum cleaners. And from there, it has been uh, 
really expanding into 49,000 employees. Uh, we are across more than 100 markets and we do sell a lot of products annually across the, across the globe. We have uh, quite a few brands in our portfolio, but if you are in Europe, I'm sure you heard about both the uh, AEG and Sanusi. And if you're over in the US, for example, maybe Frigid Air is the um, company you heard more about, but um, they're all in our portfolio as well as um, quite a few smaller localized brands as well. So it has been a massive challenge for me to come on board as when I started the first knowledge management manager in the organization from that. And that was the role that I was hired to do about three years ago. And from there until today, I am now head of digital services. So we have expanded uh, a lot since the early days. We are covering now uh, three areas. We have self-service as a service. And that means that we are not just only um, self-serving our, our consumers, uh, so the people that are looking for product information uh, on the website or tips and tricks or how to uh, articles, but we are also service um, our employees. So our contact center agents, for example, to make sure that they have the right knowledge in place or our technicians uh, to see that they have the correct information or that marketing can do educational videos or that our user manuals are aligned to what we do. So anything that comes across, as you can call it self-service to someone, that's uh, what me and my team is responsible for. We're also responsible for digital touch points. So anywhere on the website or any other social media platform, et cetera, where the consumers are interacting with us, that goes into my responsibility. So making sure that they have an outstanding consumer experience uh, with us, for whatever platform they're choosing and that we have a common strategy across all the markets, uh, all the platforms. And for voice of the consumer or voice of the customer, I suppose that's more common terminology. For us at Electrolux, we say consumers to end consumers. So if you're buying a product from us, then you're a consumer. And a customer is more of a company that we are interacting with. So that's how we differentiate. But here for Voice of the Consumer Program, we're really looking at taking all the information from all the touch points and all the places that we are interacting with the consumers uh, and merging that together to make sense out of that and sending that information down to R&D. So not just the traditional think the thinking from KCS, but also uh, expanding on that. But this year, um, you wouldn't see me in my professional attitude as much. So I will say that this is the image of me more. I have a horse which I have spent quite more time with uh, since you're not allowed to travel and I'm responsible for uh, so many markets. I stay at home and I spend time in the stable instead. So that's me. Now, uh, three years ago, I started working at Electrolux. Um, prior to that, I was a KCS certified trainer with a consortium. And I've been out helping quite a few organizations with uh, the challenges in setting up their KCS uh, way of working and implementing their knowledge management tool. But what I was really intrigued with at Electrolux was the challenges that they had and how immature they were in knowledge management. So not knowing what it is uh, in the first place. And also that uh, my area of responsibility started with APA, uh, sorry, with um, EMEA, so Europe and Africa. Uh, and then it goes more into specializing just for Europe as a target. And the strategy we are having in the support organization is very decentralized in Electrolux. That means that for each country, we would like to support our consumers in the local language and have a local presence. Uh, just to get the feel of the personal touch and making sure that the consumers are staying more loyal to us. So I had 28 countries and 34 languages because in Europe, one country can have more than one language and you have to make sure that you do support all of them. So that's quite a few coverage for this uh, to do. 
The next thing I had is um, what we're doing centrally at headquarters versus what the local uh, countries were up to. I'm not sure if you guys are from any big organizations, but if you are, you know the struggle. Uh, centrally or at the headquarters, we do come up with what we think are great ideas. And then we have each country coming up with their own great ideas. And uh, quite a few times because it's such a huge organization, it can be hard to, um, to really communicate or understand the needs from each other. So I had to go out and visit all my countries in order to understand their need and the situation that was there. And what I also discovered from that time is that they all had local infrastructure. So uh, different tools, different varieties uh, of that tools um, were bought in each country. There were no synergies from the countries up to us centrally. There were lots of knowledge bases going on uh, out there. They had seen um, knowledge management as a project in the past or a tool. Very common beginners fall, guys. So don't think about purchasing a knowledge management tool and think you have a knowledge management strategy. There are two different things. There were more than 90 official knowledge bases across Europe. We had one for each of the top brands in each country, in each language. And then you had the unofficial ones. So the agents were having their own little places uh, to go to places uh, locally as well. And for the content we had, we had a couple of uh, technical content writers that created all the knowledge that was then uh, translated and added into all these knowledge bases across Europe. And as we all know, if you have a very technically accurate people writing content, that may not be the best experience for um, the end consumers. So issue here is that the consumer was trying to uh, find what was the, the problem on online. You usually start in Google and then you come into Electrolux um, website. They didn't really understand what it meant uh, or how to work with it. And then when they were contact in the contact center, that contact center agent only had access to the same information as the consumer could find online. So it wasn't as helpful as well. So it was more in the head of the contact center person to, um, to identify what's the problem and how we're gonna solve that. And on top of that, nobody really knew what knowledge management was. So my first year at Electrolux, I've been to any meeting possible uh, talking about what it is, why it's so important to Electrolux and why we are in such a hurry to uh, implement a proper strategy that is not uh, already there in place. I think I would be speaking in uh, any meeting you can think of. So for the guys that you have seen, KCS before, and this model here, uh, the picture uh, explains it really well. And the, the principle behind KCS as a strategy is that when the consumer or person is contacting us, um, the first thing we'll do is to search in the knowledge base. If you find an article, uh, you look at it to see if it's correct. And if it is, yeah, you just share it with the consumer in this case close. Now, the second option is that if you see that is something faulty with the article, it can either be a spelling mistake or you need to add some information uh, within that article, then it's your responsibility to do that then and there. And then you close your case or your ticket. And the third scenario is that if there is no knowledge available, then you are responsible for creating that article as a part of closing that ticket with the consumer. So all the articles that we do create goes after this principle um, that every article is the solution to one problem. Now, the reason for having it this way as well is that we can easily reuse the content and understand from the knowledge base what was the cause for each of the problems that consumer are having. And then we can look into the volume to identify, okay, this is one of the top causes. So for one, for us at the lecture logs, one of the first uh, causes we identify was that the, the child lock on the oven is very easy to just touch or put on while you're cooking. And it's actually quite complex to remove because you have to put like two fingers on it and then do a little twirl. 
Uh, so we gave that information down to uh, R&D and they were like, gosh, is this an easy fix? Why haven't anyone told us before? Uh, so that was really cool that it actually works. It's um, getting the right information across. And for you guys who have heard the pitch before, uh, well, nice refresher, I suppose. So that was what I did in 2018 was really to work with uh, getting leadership buying get the full understanding of Electrolux as an organization, do a full assessment over where are we at the moment um, and uh, what needs to be done in order to, um, to have a proper implementation in place. From there, I knew that one thing is to talk about it. The other one is actually to show uh, what had happened. So I quickly started our KCS pilot in Sweden. Now, I live in Stockholm in Sweden, so I thought it's easier to do it at home. Start where I had people in the house. Uh, and guys, that was so much fun uh, doing the pilot in Sweden. I really enjoyed it. Uh, the Swedish contact centers did have some struggles. Everybody was like, oh, you should rather go to maybe a more mature country like Germany. German people are always great, I heard. Uh, but uh, I started in Sweden. I did a pilot with only 12 people in the contact center. So it was a combination out of a first line agent and back office agent. And we have an outsourced first line in Sweden. So it was nice to actually have that mix of the insourced second line. So the back office and then the outsourced first line. I did a two-day um, KCS practices workshop with the official exam because I want to make sure that people here really understand the principles for KCS and I also wanted to reuse that material uh, across the organization at the later stage. And we also did the design session. So we looked at, okay, we'll start in Sweden with implementation. How do we scale it up? What do we need to think of? How do we make sure that we have the element that is needed in a classical um, KCS implementation in place uh, to really cover our basics? And uh, if you see here on my graph, and uh, this is some of the teams from the workshop as well, uh, guess where we had the workshop and we went live. So the yellow one is self-service views for the articles. You guessed right. So we did the workshop in mid-May. And then these 12 people, these agents, uh, were so excited and they started working on content straight away. And you can see here in the graphs, and this is why I love statistics. It was a huge boost straight away. Finally, we're getting the correct article based on consumer's input. And it wasn't even that many articles that was created before you saw the, the benefit from that. And um, the feedback I got from the agent in the contact center as well was that day two, and there was one guy uh, telling me, he was like, this is so amazing. I feel so good that um, now I was able to help the consumer with an issue I usually have to escalate and wait until the next day uh, to get solved and now I can actually solve that straight away. Uh, so that was really really good feedback and it was a really good boost to us uh, to scaling up the program that we had for this. So from there um, we did escalate and continue to, um, to really work on how can we um, uh, implement cases program across Europe. Now, the issue I had now is that it was only me <laughs> that was hired. And uh, I had 28 countries and 34 languages, or 27 countries um, uh, to work on. I had covered Sweden, at least uh, a few people there, and you still, still need to do the full implementation of the whole contact center. But there I decided that I do need to expand. Uh, I need uh, to establish a KCS center of excellence. And for a large organization like Electrolux, I found it crucial for us to, um, to have this, um, this center established. Uh, we're more than, I don't know how many we are, 3,000 agents first line. It's a little bit very uh, just in Europe. Um, and then we have the back office and there's million of tickets coming in each year. Uh, so the volume is really high. And the question that we have is a variety of very easy and simple how to like how to clean your appliance type of issues to very complex uh, 
uh, installations and setup, etc. So I needed a full team. Now, lucky for me, I didn't have to go out and recruit this. I did find this uh, gold mine in Poland. And I have Carmen with me today, as uh, I quickly identify as my KCS program manager. So she is the one answering all your questions, if you have anything on, uh, on the chat here. And she will definitely help you out there. So Carmen had, uh, in her previous role, she was a part of our documentation and services team. And she understood, uh, based on the consumer feedback for finding user manual information online or the lack of it, sometimes very hard to find, she could really quickly identify the struggles we were having and she was frustrated with that. She wasn't able to, to help. So by putting her in a place where she could have full control over Europe, um, that was really a game changer for me. So all credit to you, Carmen. Thank you so much. Uh, so here I went down to Poland. I uh, trained Carmen and her team um, to this role. I had my most intensive KCS practices workshop with more uh, with Carmen and her team. I really wanted to make sure that I just learned them everything I knew. Just like to really make sure that take all my knowledge uh, and make sense out of this. And then together we can come up to the absolute best uh, strategy for Electrolux as an organization. So it's an intensive week in Poland, uh, for sure. And it was so many eye-opener uh, days that we had there and really looking at, okay, where should we go next? How should we structure ourselves? So this is the setup that we uh, decided on for, um, for the Center of Excellence team. So Carmen was responsible for four resources uh, and they had an, a central role in the organization. So they didn't really belong to a country or area, they come up. And my role as well, it's a role quite high up in the organization. That means that I have impact on purchases of uh, the tools that I needed. I have impact over resources, so people that is needed uh, in the contact center, for example, as well, uh, the skill sets of those people, uh, what we should prioritize and focus on as well uh, within the service organization. I think that was a crucial uh, way of working for us as well, that I was able to have such a high, high impact over the way of working and what was needed. And I also had a budget uh, in the background that supported that, um, especially after I had the meeting with our European CEO and he really understand the value of having a strong KCS um, strategy uh, within the organization. So that was, um, that put us in a really good place. Now, coming back to then to Carmen and her team. So she had four people in the team. We have one person who is the KCS knowledge expert. So this person is responsible for our knowledge base. Uh, that means everything from uh, setting up the licensing and the structure. And we worked on um, the, obviously the categorization uh, within the knowledge base. You know, so we wanted to have one for all. This is like the mantra behind the KCS as well. I should have one knowledge base. Uh, and we said, we think it is possible to have one knowledge base for all of Europe. That was our vision instead of having all of the different ones. But he was responsible for the, car, the solution we had back then. Um, and also responsible then for all the content that went in. So we are gonna talk about a little bit later of the different types of content that we do create. Uh, but this person was then responsible for that the content that was created for the different areas were in our KCS, obviously template, uh, a way of structuring the content for it. Then we had the KCS insight. So this is looking at the analytics, uh, especially for, um, both to map down before we implement uh, cases into a new country. Uh, what are the different KPIs that are in focus then? Where are they on the maturity level? And then straight after the implementation and then three months and a year after, but also giving monthly reports. And now as we have mature, even weekly reports um, to each country 
so they get better insights over what needs to be done um, obviously within their area countries and here we can also then match the different countries or clusters against each other to understand which countries or clusters are performing really well and which are not so where do we need to put our attention to and that's where um, the KCS uh, process person and execution come in so for execution this is the person responsible for the training and implementation, making sure we have both the training available in our internal tools. So you do like the online training, but also when we wanted to deliver the on-site training that that person will then have that material ready and prepare. Uh, so here we have a really different <laughs> setup for the way of delivery. And that's also where the KCS process person come in place to help us with uh, the assessment uh, for each country. So because the countries are so different in Europe, we have countries with amazing, like huge contact centers. And then we have other countries which only have maybe five people in the contact center. It was hard for us to have one strategy for implementation. So the best, and also because of the infrastructure and all the different tools that was available, we created an assessment which we performed to each country before we went there. And we also had then the overview of our understanding uh, what other projects or synergies, so what else is hitting that country. So we are not giving them too much that happening on the same place um, at the same time. So they can really focus on KCS once we come there. So for the big countries, if they're more than, I think it's 40 or 50 people, I can't remember, ask Carmen. Uh, then we took the whole contact center in one go, so we trained everybody at once. And if it was larger than that, then we split it up and we had a smaller group uh, and then we added more people into that. Now, because we are dealing with so many languages, so some countries uh, people don't speak English. This gave us a whole new range of uh, busy issues. <laughs> Uh, we don't speak that many languages uh, within our team. We do speak a few, uh, but not that many. Uh, so um, when we, for example, went to France and my French speaking skills, not that great. We came up with the idea of train the trainer. So here we actually had to rely on um, a person in that country having that really in-depth understanding of KCS and the way of working so that person can then deliver the training to the entire team. And for the countries where um, they did speak English to some degree, here we decided that myself and Carmen, we would either go together or one of us to the country to have on-site presence. Uh, and also for, it's great because then we can really understand the struggles they're having, the issues they're facing, uh, we get amazing feedback from the countries over what works and not work when you're on site. It's different comparing to being online. I know this year has been so different, so I'm happy that we've managed to do this in the past on site. Um, it's harder online. I suppose you, you do adapt into the new normal for that. Uh, but that's also how we did get a lot of our feedback as well for what needs to be enhanced and how, how does it work. And we're really leveraging on the country's input and not just thinking that we know best. Uh, everybody knows best for their countries and then we are tweaking them to perform even better for that. And then we also did look at the governance model. Oh yeah, we did, we did the certification, of course. Oh, that animation should have been a long time ago. I'm so proud of my team all passing the exam as well. Good guys uh, for that. But yeah, we did, the, of course, the Electrolux article template based on the KCS template. We have our content standard. It's like 30 pages long document. It's a great read. We put everything in there over what you can and cannot do. And then for the governance model that... Uh, we put in place. So in Europe, we are divided into a cluster. That means that we are clustering countries together uh, to make it more easy for us. So we have seven different clusters and then quite a few of the countries under them. So we decided that we're gonna have a KCS cluster responsible, a person that are also reporting into us centrally, as well as they're reporting into their local manager. 
And then we added um, uh, Acacia subsidies, a couple of KPIs uh, into um, obviously the monthly leadership meetings that we do have with uh, the cluster management as well to put this on the agenda. And we managed to bake it in into uh, the contact center operating model that KCS is the way of working for us. So I really make sure that it's coming in full force um, on many different areas. And it's in the beginning, it was more of an option. Do you want to be on board? When can you think about being implemented? But then after a while, it's, uh, the process went from that into this is the Electrolux way of working. This is how we do it here. Let's look at the results from the other countries. You are also doing this. How can we make this happen? And when is this going to happen? Because it has happened this year. So that cluster responsibility then had a local country responsibility, a counterpart for KCS if it's a bigger cluster. And then you had the local KCS trainers. Uh, and also you did have a back office responsible. So we talked about first line and second line. And we did split them because there were so different huge teams. So we wanted to make sure that uh, we had proper impact on all teams. And it's also this different type of information in the different teams. We also have like a web shop team, for example, or a square part team. And we want to make sure that everybody's mapping down information, either it's for internal use or out external use for that. And then uh, getting this in place, we realized that the next step we're going to do is also to align um, with headquarters and centrally. So here we did, we had uh, this uh, governance model between quality, for example. Then we had the KCA Center of Excellence looking at these are the top articles within each product line. Uh, let's make sure that quality is also reaching them or top 20. Uh, to see that how can these become even better and more groomed from us centrally, uh, both with pictures or videos, so making sure that the language is really nice as well, uh, and make sure they are perfect. For training, we make sure that we do sector training as well, that we can then push out to the countries, so to just get like an email and saying this training has to be completed within the next 10 days, for example. That's also a way of us of monitoring that. But also when training uh, are doing any new this kind of training, we make sure that articles are created for the knowledge base uh, with like the cheat sheets, let's say like that. So when you do a training, after a couple of weeks, you usually do forget quite a few of the steps, etc. By having an article as well uh, with the key say, points from the training and also referring back to the training, that was very beneficial for us to have that. Aligning with product lines. Uh, also for when we have a new um, product coming on the markets and when they do the testings of those products before they go out. Uh, and that goes together with content development as well, which is the user manual team. So whatever we were not able to put in the user manual, so sometimes you have changes or the user manuals is quite early in the process, already fixed and printed. And so that lack of knowledge in between, we put that into articles centrally, and then we translated that and sent it out to all the local knowledge bases. And then from there, that was picked up locally and then um, reviewed to see is this uh, obviously product range coming to Italy? Is it relevant for us? Yes, if it is, okay, let's just go through that and see that doesn't make sense for us. Is the translation done correctly? And then they published that out and then continue to improve it. And for marketing as well, we did have um, added value content. So this is not something that consumer is asking for, but it's more us uh, wanting to make a difference. And it goes back to Electrolux, uh, obviously vision and um, the way we are as an organization, we want to position ourselves as more sustainable. So we want you to take better care of your clothes. Uh, create better washing habits, eating habits, etc. So these kind of you know, obviously inspirational material we also added that into the same container to have the same structure over them but they are positioned on another site another area of the website as well um, to make sure that it's a bit different look and feel from that so there, those are different types of articles that we do work with so we do have the then to summarize up the local uh, help articles which are created then by the local countries we have the sector help articles. So these are the ones, for example, from product lines or um, quality might help some input here as well. 
for that. Or even if we identify in a country they are writing something new, we can pick it up and translate that. And then we have central to local. And what I mean is that is that sometimes we centrally need to say that this article needs to be created. Uh, it could be, for example, for uh, EU regulations across, I don't know, lights or the, the, the volume of uh, machine energy, etc. But then because of local law and regulation, there might be differences in the answers or the input to the article. So the local teams need to create these type of articles. And then we had the, the learn more, which is the marketing articles. So there's a lot of different things in the area going on for us. So we were busy. Uh, on top of that, we also did uh, a digital um, user manual pilot. So it has lots of synergies between the knowledge articles. If people don't find information in the user manual, they come to us and we create an article, which is then a help article or a KCS article. Uh, and then we look at the synergy in between. And also when we have our connected appliances, we are suddenly working with releases and updates of the products uh, for software, which we can't have in a printed manual anymore. So we did that. Um, Starting in 2019, we also end up getting digital care program in Arnie. This is how we are supporting our consumers on digital channels, including live chat. Has synergy with KCS World as well, because wherever the consumer go, they usually go to a community or a digital platform first, and then they give us a call or contact us. So we want to make sure that we created that program, rolled it out, and had all of them trained on KCS. And then, finally, uh, Closer to the end of 2019, we had full European coverage for KCS. That was um, an emotional big day for us, I'd say. It, it felt amazing uh, to have all these countries up and running, uh, to have a strategy in place for that. That was, uh, yeah, it was a huge achievement. So now, guys, now you think that, oh, great, you did it. You had it in place so you can relax. Well, um, unfortunately, uh, you never relax when you work for a big organization. And I shouldn't say unfortunately, because I do love um, the thing that is so many things going on uh, all the time. But what we did see now is that since we have created this process of people in the countries giving us feedback, we got a lot of feedback over how to improve. And a lot of the feedback we received was in regards to uh, our knowledge base. So we decided that we're going to do a tool assessment. Uh, because we did still have the issue with uh, the knowledge bases not being uh, as intuitive, or knowledge bases being as intuitive as we wanted. And they were lacking uh, some of the functionalities that we needed for our end game. So we have this vision at Alexalux, which we started to implement uh, as well, that we're going to have the same infrastructure across Europe. So all the country will have the same backend, full back to a backend uh, for the consumers. So um, we decided that now is the time to do a, a tool assessment. And actually, that is a good tip uh, for you guys if you are early in your KCM or KM journey. Uh, don't be so focused straight away to find the correct tool for you because it's not a tool implementation that KCS is or KM. It's a way of working. So if you have the way of working in place first and the, uh, the process for that or the behavior of how to do that, and if you then add a tool that makes it even easier for you, then you're going to see a huge boost into the program as well. So that's my tip. Don't focus on the tool first. Do that a little bit later on in the journey. Now, after we scroll the world for all these amazing tools that are out there, we decided to go for Come Around. Uh, Come Around. Come Around was just the perfect fit for us. Uh, it fits so well into our infrastructure. Uh, so the need that we had uh, before, that we the, why we chose Comoran is uh, we wanted to reduce the time to publish, especially for the, the sector articles. Uh, in the previous tool, we had to send the articles to a translation agency. 
And then from the translation agency, it had to go back into the countries and they have to approve it. And then it has to be uploaded to all of the different knowledge bases. But now Comoran has this beautiful twist in the tool. Uh, it's a machine functional functionality, machine translation functionality. So as soon as you have created the article in one language, you can have it instantly translated to all the other languages and really minimizing the time it takes to have that first layer of translation done to the articles. So we could take away both the cost and that time it took us to send it to the agency because the technology that Comoran is having is so strong that it was the same. It was good enough uh, for the first. And then we had that local layer. So then they instantly get a little playing over that. This article needs to be reviewed. They will do that as a part of their way of working. And then they can then uh, publish the article uh, instantly. So that was really amazing for us. Then we had the, the APIs. So we wanted to make sure that we had a tool like Homeron that we can integrate into the overall uh, IT infrastructure for us. And I'm actually gonna show you a picture over the infrastructure. This is like the, the easy picture um, to make it for you. But the way we wanted to do it so is that not only do we have the CRM system, and this is another tip for you guys is to, uh, not just rely on the knowledge management tool that comes with a CRM system, but make sure that this tool is fitted for the purpose that you have in your organization. It's such a game changer for where we are now and the bridge into the future, and especially in this digital era where people are at home and relying even more on the internet and on finding the information as quickly as they can uh, for them and impacting on the consumer's journeys to make sure that we create better journeys for our consumers. So on top of CRM, then we have like an omni-channel desktop layer where we put all the different channels in. So for the digital care program we created, we put all the social channels in, we have chat there, we have the phones, we have emails, uh, but also from there we have um, from when you do the phone calls uh, conversation, we can translate that into text, for example, so you can get an additional layer of it. Uh, and then also we are pushing out these articles to so many different channels. And as you see here, we even have like the MPS program. So people are serving, we are serving the consumers and they are giving feedback and then we can feedback back to them. And then we are social listening, et cetera. So there, there are really a lot of things going on there. Uh, and also you do need a vendor that is easy to collaborate with. So thank you, Comoran. You guys have been uh, amazing there. So the front end um, we did. So this is the actually really proud of this. This was uh, the first thing we did together with Comoran. We did a pilot in a couple of markets to see if it was suited to Electrolux need. And if you go to electrolux.se.it. UK, whatever, and you go to the support section, this is what it looks like today. Or you go to AG or you go to Zanuzi or any other brand. And there you can see here, we have it fully integrated into the brand website. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that we are in charge of the consumer experience and the journeys that they have on our brand website. And we know that consumer will prefer to search, like 50% like to search and 50% would like to click their way to a solution. So you really might make sure we have both of them available there. And as soon as they are, for example, searching or clicking their way, it has to be quick um, for finding the correct information. So this is what the articles look like. Uh, they are, of course, structured in the way they should be. But also from here, because of this integration, we can then guide the consumer into the next step. So would it be to book a repair for us? So we can add that tag from Comoran. We can have this little uh, book a repair tag visible here or even spare parts, or we can do sales or campaigns, et cetera. So we can actually monitor that individually on the, the article level uh, and have it <laughs> cleverly enough integrated into the agent workflow. So if they pick that up on the article and I know that this article it's a campaign article, they add its campaign tag as they are interacting with the article. Uh, and we can also have then, of course, the feedback. We love getting feedback and we really work on getting the feedback here. So if the consumer are sending us feedback, it will create a ticket 
uh, to the agents. But clever enough, uh, within Comoran on the back end, you will also see, as you can see here, this article has been flagged. So within here as well, you can see the feedback uh, of the article and then you can work directly from there. So it's there as a layer, you have it as a ticket as well. Um, but that means that even though it goes into a ticket and maybe there's a backlog for email tickets, um, then it's quicker if somebody is looking at the article and if you're looking at the article, you're responsible for the article. So then you do that and then. Here you can also see that this is one of the articles that we have translated to lots of different languages. And it's so nicely visualized with the color. So green means that it's published and you also have little labels. So these are published for self-service. So we all know what it means. And then we have an additional tag. So you can see what the brands they are published on as well uh, within the article. So you have full visibility of the articles, what it is. And then you can also see if it's been pulled back on some markets, or if there's some issue to the articles are read. So that means that they're not published for the cell service section at the moment. It could be that there's something rough to the article or something else going on. So that means that uh, the KCS Center of Excellence team can also really easily monitor the articles to see if there are any issue in any country uh, going on, especially if this is an article with lots of volume. Uh, and then also locally, it's very easy for you to filter down and find your article for it. Because now, we have one knowledge base for all the countries. This is it. the one you see here. That's the one. And if you go up in the right hand corner, there is like a language list there and you choose your own language the first time and you always then get logged into that language of the portal for you. So now we are actually really able to uh, to do that, to make sure that we have content that we can easily share across market teams and the organizations for it. And that's actually what the next step was as well, is um, that the technicians, the service operations found this tool very, very intriguing as well. When we added Comoran and they really wanted to become on board uh, and test it for the service technicians. And um, <laughs> myself and Carmen, we have never said no uh, to when anybody asks us for anything KCS related. So we were like, yeah, sure, we're only doing a pilot for a couple of countries with Comran, but we can throw in a KCS pilot for technicians as well. Let's go for it. Uh, so we did that. Um, we put that in. And when you look at the technicians, that's a different need and different area. Uh, where the agent, everything has to be so quick and happen instantly. A technician actually likes to click the way to a solution and they're a little bit more old fashioned. They're there to work with their hands for appliances. They don't like to uh, to work on the computers and do all this paperwork, etc. So we wanted to make sure that we're going to make it smoothly and easy for them and have it in the like best place available with the lowest effort uh, available for them. So we created this part. We made sure that we had a little app in Comoran, which you have on your phone. You can log in with a password or your face ID if you have a fancy phone. Straight in into the Comoran portal, you could click your way to your solution or search, of course. And this is in Danish because it's a Danish pilot. I'll guide you through it. Don't worry, I speak almost a little bit Danish. So you can go into an article and all the articles are, of course, internal. You have lots of... All the different pictures here are different series. They link to other articles. And from there, you can have attachment like a PDF. So you can have the installation guide, for example, uh, added into the attachment for that. So that made it really quickly for the technicians to find correct information. Uh, lots of the times the consumer don't have the user manuals. So then you link it to the container where we find the user manuals. And then you can just type it in on site and show the consumer, or of course, even send it to the consumer from there. Um, we have lots of other features uh, in here as well to make it easier for um, the technicians. One of the needs that they're having is that they would love to have really quick videos on site. So we added videos for them, super short, easy, how to do the change of the repair uh, for the videos. And it's like in YouTube format. So it starts loading instantly. You don't have to download anything. It's just there and it's just available for you. And if that is not helpful, we had also link uh, integrated so to their team sites. This is where they are really throwing out to the conversation to other team members to see uh, how can I, they be helped for that. So that was um, 
that was so cool to uh, to include our technicians as just a little side scope uh, into that. And uh, we really quickly scaled that up to uh, all of the technicians in Denmark. They loved it. And then the first time we showed this video, like it's a full video of it, and um, we had uh, all the technical managers from Europe in the same room, we got like applause afterwards everybody was like standing up cheering applauding uh for this it was almost surreal but technical people technicians are usually down prioritized when it comes to getting new tools and we usually prioritize um, the contact centers so that was uh fun to be able to help uh, a whole new area and with that, that's why I say the KM journey at Electrolux, because we identify that a KCS classical workflow is not working for the technicians. So where we have that classical workflow for uh, the contact centers, where we have everybody, all the agents being contributors, and then we have the more experienced one, the proven, our publishers, the publish for self-service, and we have the central uh, strategy for that. And uh, we have 90 minutes to publish now, not 40 days anymore. Uh, for the technicians, we uh, realize that we can't follow that same flow because the information that we give out to technicians is not something we can just change on demand because this is repairs. We are in people's home, the electricity involved. Uh, we have to follow the guidelines that are set and the regulations to not have any impact on any laws or any accidents happen to anyone uh, during or after the repair. So for the service technicians, we stay true to the KCS principles in the way of thinking. And then we add that just a few of the back office technicians would then be allowed to change content within come around. And for all the technicians, they're just viewers. So that means that they can just go in and view the articles or they can give a feedback on an article uh, for that. So directly on the article, but they can't do anything else for that. And it, it worked really well, I'd say. So that was a, a lot of fun to, um, to do that KCS um, pilot for that. From there, we um, now have come into 2020 and we now have a really mature program. And this I already started to talk about in 2018 is that once we have a mature knowledge base in place, then I will give you a voice and chatbot. But no country is getting that until we have enough knowledge that is structured and organized in a place. And in 2020, we had that. So I created Freya, our um, voice and chatbot. And Freya here is already live in two markets. And for next year, we're scaling up Freya to additional 11 markets. So that's been an amazing achievement. Now, with Freya, uh, we identify uh, other uh, obviously area of uh, issues for that. So here, what Freya is saying, or if you are asking Freya, hey, I have a problem with, she will say, do you have a problem with moisture or water in a tumble dryer? So referring back to a title uh, of an article, which of course are structured after the issue and um, obviously the, um, the environment, so obviously the type of product in our case, or how to clean and replace the charcoal filters, or hop display error meshes E4, E401, E402. Well, <laughs> this doesn't sound good. <laughs> we suddenly had a problem. Um, the content standard we had created is working for the content that is written but it isn't so nicely and smoothly where you have the voice layer. So we had to, to change and put our heads together and create a content and voice standard. So that was really uh, the new area for us. And we couldn't find anything around it. So we just had to come up with it ourselves. And not only is this uh, content and voice standard uh, supporting Freya, but it's also laying our foundation for how we are structuring um, website to support for disabled people I can't see, for example, or for the user manuals or for interacting with your phone devices. Like my vision would be to have Freya interact to Siri on my iPhone in order to help with a problem that is to come for that. 
So that's uh, a really uh, the next step for us uh, for that. Uh, other things we have done then, so we're going into next phase, just, yeah, we have seven uh, countries live now for the technicians, and those are the biggest, seven biggest markets for that. And going hand to hand with Freya and the, uh, the AI area, the next layer we're doing now is for AI analytics. So here, I want to make sure that from the consumer is being inspired to they purchase something or need to repair or repurchase it. I want to make sure that I have all that information to all the channels structured and not just the article as a structured source, but adding other areas. We are now focusing uh, together with Comoran on uh, agent assist, for example. So uh, Comoran has together with Microsoft, they are now uh, developing that they're listening in on the voice conversation we are having with the consumer in the contact center. And then from that, we are suggesting articles live to the consumers and then adding that into then the interaction automatically. And once the case is closed, I have my other AI tool for the analytics on the back doing a summary of that conversation. So the, so the agent don't have to, to do that summary themselves, which is automatically there. And then as the last step in the layers, I want to make sure that that backend AI uh, analytics, which we're getting from Clara Rich, can also map the, the article into the summary or of that conversation to look at, is my link accuracy correct here? Or where do we need to prove? And why is it, is it the agent that didn't have the skill set? Was it the lack in the, in the process, et cetera? And then adding other sources into that. So that's uh, it's just the start of something new and unknown for us. Uh, it's... Uh, it's going to be uh, like 2021. It's really going to be the, the game changers year for us. So hopefully uh, I'm allowed to come back in a year's time and tell you about that journey and how we are using uh, Freya or I don't know if I'm going to name it something else for the back end as uh, Acacia's expert of helping us um, producing even better knowledge and making sure that the agents are doing and producing better and doing the right behavior without the manual work that we have today. So the result, uh, it does matter. Somebody in my organization, my boss, say that it's all about the result. Everything is just a conversation. And uh, I suppose it is. Uh, looking at uh, our articles, the views from 2018 is quite dark here. Uh, it has increasing uh, slowly, but what was uh, a really big difference is uh, 2019 towards the end of the year, we changed into come around and we had that full integration into website. And as you know, is that SEO to Google takes up to three months and right on target as well, you do see that jump in the views of the articles combined with the refresher we have done in the contact centers um, for KCS. Uh, it's been amazing. The last month we had, I don't know, more than 2 million views. So uh, the numbers are, outblown it's uh it's great number but it also means that we're getting all this volume that now goes into our supported electrolux website channel and we can start redirecting those consumer into electrolux support journey or repurchase journey or really making sure that we are creating these outstanding consumer experiences for our consumers and keeping them loyal with us and looking at the service call rate, so um, how many uh, technicians we're sending out to the consumers, as you can see from 2018, when we started working with the strategy as well and the other changes to the company, uh, the service call rate really went down. We stopped that huge leakage that we were having uh, from the agent not understanding and identifying that this is actually a problem that consumer can solve themselves. I'm gonna help that uh, instead of sending other technician, which is both expensive, time consuming and disturbing for the consumer to have to wait several days and then just be told that, oh, this is like cleaning the filter or something you just do yourself easily and maybe even get billed for it. That's not a nice experience. So that query is an old graph, but the curve is still going down uh, for that. So, Fantastic achievements. And then for MPS as well, 
a huge increase uh, in the contact center for that. We are now able to deliver so much better information now to the consumers. And even the employees, the agents are happy now that instead of having two screen open with maybe 15 different tools open, they have only one tool with the omni-channel support now and everything is just popping up as they need that. So based on the, the type of consumer that comes in, that is just coming there for them. So oh guys, now you have to wake up again, because now it comes to the learning in my last slide here. Um, I'm just going to give you one crucial tip to end my session. And this is something that we have done, um, myself and Carmen, so many times. So if you are unsure, go back to the KCS mythology. Go back and read the KCS practices guide and go back in there and see what does it say and use that as your foundation into building your program. That keep yourself as true as you can for it. It's easy to get lost today with all the fancy technologies and all the different trends and everything that goes around in the market. But stay true, stay true to what really works and use that for you guys. And that's what I had today. So, for better living from Sweden, uh, it's me. Thank you so guy, so much for listening into the full hour. Now, if you have any questions, uh, we can take them now. And Garmin, you've been this is Arnfin. You've been doing a tremendous job in the chat. Is there anything you want to bring up? To <laughs> yes, there was one question actually. Uh, and I wanted to leave that for Lina. Um, somebody was asking if we can share our content standard. So ah, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm sure we can help you out. We love sharing, for sure. That's what this uh, whole community is all about. For anyone else as well, guys, if you need inspiration or just want to talk about KM or KCS, please connect to myself and Carmen. We love hanging out with equal minded people. Great. Do you want the well, content standard or the content and voice standard? Hmm? <laughs> yeah, they probably love both the voice also. <laughs> get them thinking, get them thinking. <laughs> And um, we will, and thank you so much. This was so informative, this excellent presentation. And we will have this posted on the KCS Academy site, as well as it'll be sent out to all who have uh, registered. And Lena, do you mind sending me the presentation? We can have that posted along with the, um, the video. Uh, yes, sure. I can send that to you. Okay, great. Well, thank you all for all the great questions in chat. And thanks again for the... Uh, Incredible presentation and thanks Carmen for the great job on all the uh, the chat answers. And uh, you all have a great day. And again, hopefully you all saw that we do have two upcoming sessions and uh, we put those in the chat or you can also go to the KCS Academy events site and uh, have one coming up uh, later in December and then another one in uh, January. So thank you all for hanging out a little later and uh, you all have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Bye.